What's up FM? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now this video is really a bit of an ongoing video to how to get the most out of your F45 training. This one specifically is cardio. So how do you maximize your cardio days? Now with F45, I'm gonna assume you know what it's all about, but basically they do three cardio sessions a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So this is about maximizing those days and really making sure you're getting the most out of your training. When it comes to your cardio days, they should be approached very differently to your weight days. This is because you're going for different goals in that time. F45 generally is about body composition change. In other words, putting on lean muscle mass while losing weight as well. And the cardio aspect is a really important one, but it's very different in how you approach those weight days. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about how to do this. I've done on that previously about how to get the most out of your strength days. Go check that out, I'll explain a little bit more about why, but it's important to have a hybrid between these two types of, types of training. And that is exactly why this form has been put together. It's all about maximizing the results that you guys get. So let's just jump straight into it guys. So my first one is work at a high intensity. Yes, it's called HIT training, high intensity interval training. However, during those work times, you really need to move. It is a 45 minute format very purposely in order for you to maximize your results. If you work at a high intensity, your heart rate will be spiked and you're not only affecting your aerobic capacity, you're also pushing your anaerobic threshold, which means you actually burn more calories after the session as well. So make sure when those work periods are on, you're working at a high intensity. My second tip would be give yourself some time targets in some of the exercises or in the workout. What I mean by this, if you're doing bench hops and you're doing it for 45 seconds, maybe give yourself a target of hitting 70 in that time. What that'll do, it'll change your goal from really burning calories to hitting those numbers. And what it does to you mentally, it gets you switched on and you're pumped. You just wanna hit that number, which means you actually work harder. So pick a couple of stations with this one, work with the trainers, they love these as well. So tell them which ones you wanna work on, otherwise they'll tell you which ones they want you working on and really push yourself as hard as you can throughout these exercises. That kind of leads me on to my third point and that is work with the trainers. It's always good to tell the trainers I really want to be worked hard during these sessions because guess what happens? They're going to push you so much harder as well. They can give you targets throughout the workout. They can also work with you to make sure even when you're hitting a bit of fatigue in the latter end of the sessions that you still push yourself as best as you can. So work with them as best you can. My fourth point is don't sit down during the breaks. Now the reason I really emphasize this point is because when you're in the middle of your cardio session even even during the drinks breaks, you should continuously be walking around, keep your legs moving, shake it out, have a bit of a stretch. As soon as you start to sit down, rest too much, you're gonna to start to build up a little bit of lactic acid, which is not gonna be good when you're going back into your workout. When you're doing this, it's basically telling your body to start relaxing, which is not gonna be good. You wanna keep the blood flowing. You don't have to keep your legs moving too much all the time, but you wanna keep enough to keep that blood flow going so you can go straight back into it as well. This includes in between sets. Don't stop, make sure you have your head up, keep your breathing going, it's really, really important, and then jump straight into that next set. Number five, and this is a pet hate, don't stop early. If the set is going for 60 seconds, and I know that's a long set, try as best you can not to stop early. These workouts are programmed very specifically for a purpose. So you've got some workouts which are doing 20 second sets, they're short bursts. You've got other ones doing 60 second sets. These are a little bit slower in terms of the pacing, but it's designed with enough rest to allow you to be able to go hard during that workout as well or during that set. So please don't stop early during the workouts. My next point to really go on for those of you particularly who are doing 45 for quite a while. Use a heart rate monitor. F45 have Lionheart. These are all around the studio and they're connected via Bluetooth. Really easy way and non-invasive way to check your heart rate as you're going. Using these heart rate monitors in particular during cardio days are super important because you're trying to keep it high, you're trying to burn as many calories as you can. It gives you real feedback during the workout, which means you can see and your trainer can see visually how hard you're working. What that does for you, you can see yourself start to drop off a little bit. You will say to yourself, I need to start working hard. I need to keep it above X percent during the workout. So it's a really great way to first Firstly, see how you're going mid-session and secondly, the amount of data you get afterwards is really cool and you can see your progress over time. So I'd highly recommend getting one of these. Number seven is maintain a pace. I spoke earlier about short and longer sets. It's really key to try to maintain the same pace during that working set as best as you can. If it's a 20, 30, 40, whatever the work time is, find out a pace which works for you and try to hold it as best you can. This means your heart is gonna be continuously pumping and you're gonna be getting the best out of the workout. That's what they're designed to do. So try to hold the same pace. Try to figure it out as well as you go through. Obviously it takes a little bit of time to figure these out, particularly a lot of the new movements or if you're just new into it as well. So figure out something which works for you and then stick to it. Point number eight is know where you're at. 
the better you know your body, the better you know how to push it. So really understand as best you can how your body operates, what works for you, what doesn't. This kind of goes back a little bit to the pacing as well. And by knowing this, you can push yourself just that extra 1% each time. It's always progression over perfection. I'm huge on that. If you can keep progressing each session, it's a win. You're killing it. You don't have to absolutely obliterate yourself each session. All you need is those incremental improvements and you'll be making absolutely amazing gains over time. So know where you're at and use that to your advantage. Number nine, another pet hate warm up properly. This includes the warm up during the demos as well and trying to get a good stretch in as well. During these warm up demos, they're dynamic stretching, which is ideal before you start a cardio workout. It's much better than static stretching. There's been a lot of research on this as well. So the dynamic stretching is all about warming up all parts of your body, top to bottom, to allow you to jump into that session as best as you can. I'd highly recommend it for a few reasons. One, you're gonna be ready to go. Two, injury prevention as well. You should also try to have a bit of a stretch afterwards if you can. Normally there are sections in the gym where you can do this one, or even if they're doing the talking at the start, you can do a little bit of a stretch before you jump into it as well, but it's really, really important that you warm up properly so you're ready to go. Now my last point would be, make sure you're eating correctly with this one. It's always important to try to eat your carbs in and around your workouts. Now there is the F45 challenge, which is really important. Try to time your meals so that you're getting the best energy when you're training. I know it is really hard to do this early, early in the morning. What I'd recommend if you're training at those 5, 15, 6 a.m. classes, you don't have to eat necessarily before you come in, but make sure you're timing your meals around your workouts. That way you can recover as best as you can. If you're training in the afternoon, get your meal in two hours beforehand, one to two hours beforehand so that way you have energy and then eat afterwards as well. So that way you're replenishing yourself as best you can. So meal timing is really essential. And that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my content, please subscribe down below or you can follow me on Instagram. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Enjoy your training. Please smash as best you can. Also, let us know what studio you're training at too. I love this overall F45 global community too. So wherever you guys are, I really hope you're killing it. If you watch this video, you're on the right track in terms of pushing yourself as well. Keep going with it and let's smash it together team.